Praise be Jesus and Mary. St. Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, this is chapter 6, he said, the wages of sin is death. And so this is the payment or the repayment for sin that the devil gives, namely death. That's the reward. Remember, the devil is a murderer from the beginning. And so sin, uh, if it's, it either leads to death or actually constitutes death in and of itself, right? We think of spiritual death on the one who commits a mortal sin. It's called mortal precisely for that reason. The word mortal coming from the Latin mors mortis, which means death. And so it is a deadly sin, and it is constitutes the loss of God's grace. There's also what's called the second death. Remember the book of Revelation talks about the second death. And that is eternal damnation, being thrown into the pool of fire, again, from the book of Revelation. And that is one who loses glory, eternal glory. So there's the loss of grace in this life, and then the loss of glory in the next. This is spiritual death. But it can also lead to physical death, right? The sins um, can also lead to physical death. In fact, this morning, the Office of Readings, which just happens to be from the day, it's not even for St. Maria Goretti, uh, the Office of Readings, we read about King David, who after taking a nap was strolling around on the roof and saw down below the beautiful Bathsheba. Okay, and he was tempted, and instead of resisting that temptation and mortifying himself and turning to prayer, he gave in to impure thoughts, and those thoughts then led to actions, namely adultery, and then what did adultery lead to? Adultery led to murder, and so David's sin led to death, murder. We see this in our own day, right? How many sins of impurity, fornication, lead to abortion, murder, right? It happens, it happens. And so it was also in the case of the saint we celebrate today, Saint Maria Goretti, who was a good, devout girl, knew her faith, knew about the Ten Commandments and sins and purity and damnation, okay? And her assailant, Alessandro Serenelli, perhaps at one time also knew these things, but was blinded by sin, was completely blinded and overcome, and as he himself testifies, he wasn't himself. He was like moved by uh, an outside force, okay? Of course, there was his cooperation. So what happened was uh, St. Maria Goretti, living uh, with her family, minus her father, because her father had already died, uh, on a farm, and there happened to be another family, a father and his son, who also lived on the farm. Now, Alessandro, if I'm not mistaken, was around 17 years old, Maria Goretti, 12 years old. And Alessandro was steeped in sins of impurity, all right? At the time, there was the um, uh, d giving out of impure images, all right? This was early 1900s, and, uh, and he was, he as, again, as he himself testifies, this was the start, right? He gave himself over to these sins of impurity, which then led to his lust for Maria Goretti and his attempt several times, okay, to violate her purity. <clears throat> but she resisted, and she resisted to the point of death, and she bore witness to the faith, saying, no, that's a sin. You will go to hell. Okay? You see the supernatural considerations? And then, in a rage, Alessandro then stabbed her 14 times with this farming tool, which was used to, to sharpen farming tools. So it was a, a big, long pike, and um, handheld. And so he stabbed her 14 times, but she didn't die right away. 
She ended up living for about another 24 hours, and a priest who was on the scene by her deathbed asked her if she forgave her assailant, if she forgave Alessandra, and said, she said, yes, I forgive him, and I want him to be with me in heaven. Okay? Supernatural. That's all heroic forgiveness on her part, heroic love for God, and heroic love for neighbor. And so it would be later on, Alessandro, he would be convicted, of course, and go to prison and be unrepentant okay, until sometime later, I think a few years passed, when St. Maria Goretti then appeared to him in a dream, handing him 14 lilies, those lilies of purity for each wound that she received. And that was all kept silent until the local bishop went to visit Alessandro in prison and he related the story to him. So Alessandro, because of that vision, he converted and would go on to live a penitential life after many years in prison. And uh, he would finish his life as somewhat of a third order Franciscan. He was also at the canonization of St. Maria Goretti, but while everyone was overjoyed, he was the only one in tears in the entire crowd. He was weeping. And so uh, today, in fact, in our own times here in America, recently we've got our own Maria Goretti. I don't know if you heard the story of Jamie Schmidt. She was in uh, St. Louis. She's from St. Louis. And 53 years old, married, mother of three. She walked into a Catholic gift shop, bookstore, there in St. Louis. This was last fall. Okay, devout woman, praise the rosary. In fact, she was there in the store buying materials for uh, rosary making. And so she's in there, and there are two other women who worked at this store. And a man comes in wielding a gun, moves them into the back room, and assaults the first two women, right? Then he turns to Jamie to assault her as well and makes his demands, and she says, in the name of God, I will not. And he shot her point blank. She didn't die immediately, but the other two women who were there and witnessed everything, they said she continued to pray, okay? Silently, under breath, she was praying the Our Father, and we all know the Our Father. And in the Our Father, we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is all very much like Maria Goretti, right? This woman died for the virtue of purity, the Christian virtue of purity. And she was forgiving her assailant as she continued to pray. She'd be taken off to the hospital and die sometime later, and they say that she continued to pray the Our Father the entire time. And so we have uh, very similar circumstances, and I'm personally praying that Jamie Schmidt appear to her assailant along with St. Maria Goretti, along with Alessandro Serenelli, to obtain this man's conversion and his eventual entrance into heaven. Wouldn't that be the beautiful victory on the part of God over sin so that grace and life can triumph? Saint Maria Goretti, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.